choice here. So I take my pointer, I put this arrow in, and then I give it the method name of what it's going to do. So in this case, I made a counter that started at five. I'm telling that counter to increment, and then I'm asking that counter what its value is, and I'll get six back here. And that was the end of that. The one thing I completely forgot to put into the slide that's going to be kind of important, um, Patty talked about inheritance, inheriting from a method. Yeah, I think we'll not explain inheritance, but the way the code is set up is they have actually made a robot class already. They have made it and it has a bunch of methods in it for one method that gets called every cycle through teleop, one that gets called every periodically through teleop. And right now those methods don't do very much. What we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, you made me a robot, I'm going to extend that thing so I will do everything the robot does, and I'm going to add more functionality to the robot. And this is what you're talking about, about overriding, is the idea that we're going to take the methods and we're going to say, you used to do this little bit of nothing, which was just mainly feeding the watchdog. I'm going to replace that method with more code of what I want to have happen in Teleop. And that's what Pat and Lee are going to show you now. Oh, I'm sorry, are there any questions before they come up? Yep. Polymorphism? Yeah. Uh, no, you can get by in this without doing any of that. There, I know that some teams are talking about the idea of using C++ and having, a, like, you can use that to make your project prettier later on. Um, we're looking at it with autonomous setup, we might go that way, but for the purpose of making a robot function completely on the field, autonomous, teleop, there's no need to know what polymorphism is. Any other questions? All right, here are Pat and Lee, and then hopefully they'll generate a whole bunch more questions. This is gonna be the first part of a two-part presentation. Uh, in the first part, I'm basically gonna show all the classes, all the useful classes that are in the C++ library, and then in the second part, which is after all the lab stuff, we're actually going to code up uh, this robot and actually get it to work uh, using all the stuff that I showed you now. Um, once again, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me at any time. And, all right, let's get going. So first off, I want to explain a couple of the major differences specifically between programming on the 2008 and previous controller and programming on the new one. So uh, the first major difference is that C++ classes are used to represent everything. Uh, there's a class for the victor, there's a class for analog inputs, there's a class for joysticks, there's a class for the robot itself. So it's all about classes this year. Uh, also, as Karthik mentioned before, there's a lot more power, a lot more memory uh, in the new controller. Um, we're actually, it's actually okay to use floating point calculations now. Um, they were on the old controller too, but they were simulated, which made them really slow. But the processor in here does native floating point calculations, which is great. And also, 32-bit uh, calculations are a lot faster because this is actually a 32-bit processor, whereas the old one was 8-bit, so that too was simulated. Uh, lastly, the other great difference is that it's really easy to program stuff in real time. And what I mean by that is that there's actually a clock on there which counts up in microseconds, milliseconds, seconds. So when you set your autonomous mode to go somewhere for two seconds, it'll actually go for two seconds instead of, I don't know, 80 loops or whatever you use before to track the time. Uh, the IDE we use to develop code in C++ is called Wind River. Uh, Wind River Workbench, that is. Wind River is the company that produces uh, embedded systems. And the IDE itself uh, might look familiar to people who are, have used Eclipse because it's basically just a proprietary fork of Eclipse. Uh, the compiler we use is GCC, the GNU compiler collection. And uh, in actuality, the code's not running directly on the processor, it's running on top of a real-time operating system called VxWorks, which also runs on things like uh, uh, Linux routers, for example. Um, the library we use for C++ is called WPILib. Uh, it was produced by the Worcester Polytechnic Institute. And basically it's just largely a collection of classes that represent everything in the control system. Uh, each class has got its own .h and .cpp files. And uh, generally I find that the best source of documentation when I want to know how to use a class is to look at the .h file and uh, see what methods it has so that I know how to call them. Okay, first off, the robot itself uh, we're going to use a class called Iterative Robot, which is provided by WPI. Uh, 
They provided a couple of other ones, but they're not that great. And we really recommend, if you program in C++, you use the iterative robot. Uh, essentially, it's a base class that you will inherit, in, sorry, inherit from to create your own robot. And uh, you can basically customize this class by uh, changing what goes on in the constructor and what goes on in any of these six methods, which I'm explain right now. Uh, this is what a sample robot class would look like. Uh, so class my robot class, it would inherit from an iterative robot, and then it would implement a constructor. That's the uh, this here. And then these six functions are virtual functions called from iterative robot, which are automatically called when certain things happen in the controller. Uh, also, what you would do uh, down here is um, declare any kind of variable you want to have in your robot. So in this case, I've got a joystick and two victors for driving. So the constructor is called once um, when an object is created. Uh, it's guaranteed to be called before anything else because the object doesn't really exist before the constructor is called. So in my constructor, what I'm doing here is initializing my new joystick to use port one, and one of my victors to use pwl1 and the other one to use pwl2. There's also a function called disabled init, and it's called exactly once at the beginning of disabled mode. So this is whenever you turn your robot on and it first gets off the field, or whenever you flip the switch to disabled mode. So um, I'm not exactly sure what you want to put in this function, but it's there if you want to use it. There's disabled periodic, which runs once every five milliseconds, or on a 200 hertz cycle. Um, basically, it just runs continuously while the robot is disabled. So you can use it for such things as setting your autonomous mode um, or initializing your gyro before the match starts. Um, you'll see here I'm also feeding the watchdog. Uh, I mentioned the watchdog before, but what it is exactly is uh, it's a timer that runs on the serial independent of all your code. And basically, if you don't call this function on it, before, I think it's uh, 100 or 200 milliseconds, the FPGA will automatically cut off all outputs to the, to the robots, victors, and uh, Jaguars, and all that. And the reason for that is, um, if you're debugging and you hit a breakpoint, then execution of your code is going to stop. But the motors will be left at whatever value you last set them to, so the robot will keep going. Except that once the watchdog expires, the robot will stop. And since it's a potential safety hazard, that's why they put it in. Uh, there's also a teleop init function, which is called right when the robot is enabled. And uh, you use this, for example, to initialize your outputs to zero so that as soon as you turn your robot on, it's not doing something you don't expect it to. There's a teleop periodic function where most of your main operator control code will go. It's also called 200 times per second, and once again, you have to feed the watchdog in this function. Um, the autonomous init function is called once at the beginning of autonomous mode. So you might use it to reset any variables used in autonomous. And lastly, the autonomous periodic function uh, is called periodically during autonomous mode. And it's in this function that you do your autonomous control. So uh, doing your outputs, um, checking your sensors, and once again, you're, you have to keep a watch uh, in this function too. Um, I also want to briefly mention the printf function, which can be used to display output from the robot on your computer. And uh, this is really useful for debugging. Um, you can have it show the value of the sensor while the robot's disabled. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with programming on last year's system, the syntax is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, it's also the same as printf syntax on standard C, C++. And uh, those are just some examples of how to use it. You can printf just uh, regular text. The backslash n means uh, print from the next line it means uh, print out a new line character so that when you're in the console, it doesn't just keep scrolling to the right. Uh, you can also print out variables basically by putting in the formatting string this percent sign %d, which is a placeholder for an integer. And then after that string, you'd actually output the integer. And same thing goes for floats, where the placeholder is a percent sign %f. OK, moving on to the actual classes in WPI then. First up is the joystick, which represents one of those uh, Logitech uh, attack joysticks that are plugged into the driver station. Um, basically, in its constructor, all you have to do is pass in the port number, which means USB port 1, 2, 3, or 4. And just based on that, it will automatically assign that port to the